Welcome to the 2023 Under 18 Australian Lacrosse National Championships, brought to you today live and free on the Australian Lacrosse Network. My name is Shendo Oliver and it's my pleasure to bring you this game today live and free. Before we get started, let's introduce the players from Western Australia. Number one, Jessica Carson. Number two, Zoe Chabanoff. Number four, Freya Payne. Number five, Nicola Carson. Number six, Chloe Duckworth. Number 11, Lucy Wills. Number 12, Ruby Coswara. Number 14, Veronica Keane. Number 15, Corey Rainey. Number 17, Maddie Carroll. Number 19, Sophia Berrigetti. Number 20, Ruby Taylor. Number 21, Bindi Buckman. Number 27, Emma E. Number 38, Summer Buckman. Number 44, Mara Crane. Head, head coach is Kate Hooper. Assistant coaches is Devon Manu, Brendan Ballerine. And team manager is Lisa, Lisa Bell. And assistant manager is Todd Keane. From Auckland, we have number one, Ella McPherson. Number two, Aretha Ankrishanan. Sorry if I said that wrong. Number four, Ava Gaty. Number five, Taylor, Tyler Chapman. Number seven, Zoe Seawright. Number 20, who's the goalie? Lizzie Hardiman. Number 24, Caitlin Douglas Bell. Number 26, India O'Neill. Number 28, Isabel Frenson. I hope I've got that right. I know she's playing in South Australia, so I'll follow up on that shortly. Number 29, Ruby Braithwaite. Number 33, Kano Sugawara. Number 35, Dinthi Bamagrusai. And I'm really sorry if I said that wrong. Dinthi, I will definitely give you plenty of shout outs during the game though. Number 36, Jade Bennett, number 37, known as the vegan, I've been told, and she loves being known as that, Sophia Webb. Number 38, Grace McCarthy, head coach, Holly Patrick, assistant coach, Ollie Archer, team manager, Anna Gaty. And supporting me today on the commentary is a lady that really needs no introduction. She's won medals from gold, silver and bronze. She's coached across the world, Australia, many, many times, played and represented them. I mean, she was the first captain of the first ever under 19 Australian team that took out gold. Please welcome today, Trish Adams. Thanks so much for having me. I know, what Great an intro. Great to be here. <laughs> Thanks for being down here, Trish. I know you've come all this way to watch um, Jade play, but we've, you know, snapped you up and used you to help us out here on ALN. What are you excited about for this afternoon's game, Trish? I'm just really excited. I think both sides ha are coming into their best lacrosse um, at the end of the tournament. I think uh, Western Australia has shown tremendous improvement throughout the week. So I think they'll be really ready to, to show their best performance and play really hard. And Auckland had a really great match this morning against Victoria. Um, saw them connecting really well down the field, a lot of transition goals. Um, so I'm really excited to see how that plays out. Yeah, I, I'm totally with you. I look at this. Teams are ready to play, but we've still got coaches on the field, so we must be a little bit ahead of schedule. I know that everyone's keen to get the game started. They won't be starting until 2 or 3 p.m. exactly, so we've got two minutes just to kind of chat. How are you finding the weather? How are you finding your trip to Perth? Perth is absolutely beautiful. You've certainly turned the weather on for us here. Um, I think would suit the WA girls in terms of temperatures. The others, I think, are struggling a little yeah, with, with we're the talk, heat. We were talking about on the broadcast earlier, like, you know, at least we're used to the weather here in Perth. It's always hot, but for particularly New Zealand um, and the Melbourne team, or well, the Victorians, it's surely going to be so hot for them. And I'm not sure how what the weather's like at the moment in Adelaide. But We're um, somewhere in between, I think. I think we're, we're probably um, enjoy the warm weather, but not used to anything with a, with a three in front at this time of the year, certainly. Yeah. So tomorrow's forecast, I think, is um, going to be challenging for the final. Yeah. Um, but certainly from a spectator point of view, we can't complain. It's yeah. amazing. And what a great setup uh, they've got here at the Wimbledon Cross Club. It's yeah. absolutely beautiful. It is. They've done a great job, Lacrosse WA, hosting this event. I'm very proud to say this is my home lacrosse club and share it with the rest of the world. So hopefully people are tuning in from different places. It's beautiful. Looks like we're about to get a start on as we set up for the centre draw, which is Corey Rainey. I'm just trying to see who she's uh, matching up against. I did mention earlier that um, in the previous game this morning that the Auckland team are really tall, but I've been asked to give a mention to the sh two shortest players in the team, which is <laughs> Ella McPherson and Aretha, um, number two. So there it is. You've heard it here, but you've got a heap of tall girls and then two real shorties. <laughs> However, Ella might be the shortest, but um, she's definitely one of the toughest. So we have the draw. Going to be won by Sugawara, I think. Body wow. looks like a body, which means Corey Rainey will pick that ball up. Rainey looking inside with a feed, couldn't connect to Chloe Duckworth. Ball's gone out of play, and that should be is it an Auckland ball? It wasn't a shot. Yeah, Auckland. 
So I'm going to ask you questions just to confirm my skill knowledge. I'll be like, is that this or is that this? I think that was this. Yeah, certainly not a shot off the pass yeah. there. They had some really beautiful transition goals. It looks like Western Australia are, are trying to stop that and getting back in quite quickly, filling the gaps there, which I, yep. I think is a smart move um, yep. against Auckland. Buckman sisters in the West Australian defence. We've got Izzy here. This is the girl you mentioned previously yes, that's, that's playing in um, South Australia this season for the Woodville Lacrosse Club. Yeah, that's what I wanted to confirm. I was yes. like, hopefully I'm saying her name right and I can actually confirm that with you, Trish. Yeah, you are. She's from your home patch. Yes, yeah, she's over living with Beck Keller at the moment um, with her family, which is brilliant. I love when lacrosse gets to connect in those ways. Yeah, awesome experience for her too and I bet she's learning heaps. Yeah. Who's coaching out at Woodville at the moment? Uh, Dean Foreman, actually, from oh, yes. over from New Zealand. Yeah, yes, he's working yes. with the Woodville women, which is which is great for them. Yeah, awesome. He's a great coach. As Auckland moved the ball around the fan. Again, that fan is huge now. <laughs> you don't have a fan in SA, do you? We do. We've, we're, we're currently playing with these rules. So okay. um, another card there. Had a couple of those today. Yep, Jessica Carson will take a seat for two minutes, which means that Auckland will pay, play with a two minute man up advantage. In the giant fan. <laughs> Looking to penetrate that defense. Oh, Breaks move. through. Big save by Ruby. In the crease call there. Ball will be cleared by Taylor to Rainey. Rainey being pushed. I don't know if she's going to get called for a push or the out of bounds, mm, but it's, it's definitely like a push. push. So difficult to stop girls running at full pace through the midfield and, and not get the push calls. So, yeah. Oh, is that going to be a charge or is that going to be a push? I think a push call there. Look straight inside. McPherson with the ball. I told you she was a jet. <laughs> Here she is. Oh, there's a pre-check. Empty cross. Looks like there's plenty of endeavour and hustle out there, though. Love the intensity yeah, early awesome. in the game. And here we go, RSA <laughs> champion. Looking to drive, just peels out. WA playing zone defence, obviously with their man down. Is he looking to drive? Trying to find her options. Ball bounces over the restraining line, but it's going to be taken back and given back to Auckland. Ball with McCarthy. She's got heaps of room on her left-hand side, Trish. So much. Look it's it's actually channel. really difficult. Oh, and look, and Izzy's very intelligently just put herself in that space, but looking to drive shot. alone. Taylor got a piece of that, but it has converted. Auckland opens the scoring. Yeah, great move by Izzy. Huge improvement from the Western Australian goalkeeper. Um, obviously coming out a little bit more than she yeah. was at the start of the tournament. So I think she's managed to get a few saves just by being a little bit more aggressive. Yeah. Um, but they just managed to sneak one past her. Yeah, it must be hard. Like, it's horrible when you're a goalie, you get a piece of it and you just, you get stick to it and you yes. just can't stop it. It's like a field player when they tell you, if you can get a stick to it, you can catch it. Yeah. Uh, not always <laughs> as easy as that, but... What did Melly used to say? Near enough isn't good enough. Yeah, correct. So, so true. Rainey with the ball. West Australia wins that centre draw. Rainey's got heaps of room to her left if she wanted to take a big sweep drive that way, but there's a cutter coming through in Ruby Coswara. Lovely feed on the inside. Great cut. Couldn't convert. Great save by the... Keeper from Auckland, Lizzie Hardiman. Intercept there by Veronica Keane. The ball is always dangerous when it's in V's stick. V is not only a great lacrosse player, she's also a champion cricketer. Really? That, wow. Um, yeah, she's been selected in like a junior Australian team or something. Or um, 
there was a big news article on her on Channel 10 recently that I watched. Fantastic. Doing a bit of research. <laughs> I watched her. I've watched her in a couple of games. Great shot. Yeah. Use of the bounce on the ground there. Yeah, I watched her in a couple of matches and really enjoyed her hustle in the midfield. Yeah. The determination. Yeah, she's to out come of up with loose balls. Yeah, she's out of Basie and she's just a, a great product from that club. I love watching her play. She's so dynamic. Her shot selection. You know, she's got it. She's got it all. I can't wait to see her go through that next under twenties program and Amazing. what she can do. It's an exciting time with the under twenties program coming up. Yes. Um, yeah, about to kick off, and, and all of these girls. Hopefully we'll be um, putting themselves up for selection and, and working towards that. It's such a great program in terms of uh, their growth, both on and off the lacrosse field. So, yeah. Coswara comes up with that ball. Got a little Beautiful. pass inside. Lucy Wills. Lovely. What a and great they little are slip. It. Love seeing that excitement and enthusiasm. Just fantastic. And yeah, Lucy loves a goal. She'll be going, yes, Queen. <laughs> <laughs> yep, she's still cheering. How yeah. great. Lucy was on our box tour to um, Melbourne this year, and she might have been the youngest in the team, but she was the most enthusiastic. Oh, I, I loved seeing the family picks come from there, having all the, the sister connection yeah. in there playing. It was brilliant. So we go back to the centre. Dinthy in the centre, taking on Corey Rainey. Another great centre possession there. It's definitely going the way of Western Australia at this point. Because Wire retains that ball, finds Rainey. Will's looking to help. Got a few cutters coming from the back corners. Corey looking to drive. Finds support in Duckworth. Duckworth finds the back of the net. W Wire mm. on a roll. And they are loving it. The bigger arc definitely gives those little lanes for people to work through that wouldn't traditionally be there. So um, the defenders, it's quite a long way for them mm. to slide. So I certainly think the bigger arc space is going to see a need for stronger one-on-one -on -one defense than we've probably had to have um, yep. previously. Yep. And I think it's, the product is some higher scoring games. Yeah. Um, a lot more goals being scored in the game, which can be really exciting for the mm. for the fans. I'm like, is it going to be harder to shoot from the 15 metre in a, in a set shot or is it going to see us start throwing some big shots like Charlotte North? Yeah, I think the whole... I can only assume that one of the reasons for the bigger arc is to try and remove the wind-up shots um, and probably see more of passing or running in. Yep. And there's oh, a lovely. shot. Fantastic and conversion. Great answer from Auckland. Just trying to get the name of the goal scorer. I think it's Kano again. Yeah, I Kano. believe so. Kano Sugawara. She was big in the last game too. Heaps of, sh heaps of love from her online, that's for sure. Lacrosse really sends its, lends itself sorry, to that athleticism yep. um, and really hard drives to the cage. So I loved that in the earlier game. Um, she certainly demonstrated that. Great to see it again there. Mm. The fitness of these young girls is phenomenal. Like, I mean, watching Wakata, Wakata earlier and even the SA girls, the Vic girls, the level is incredible. And this is where we're starting before we start that tw under-20s program. We're setting ourselves up well. Certainly. Because we're holding the ball at the top. There's not really anyone down at X, but Chubinoff seems to be moving down there now. Ruby looking to drive. Ooh. Takes Possibly a, a free shot. space call there. Yeah, definitely. Don't you hate that when they call the free space and you've taken the shot and it's gone in? Well, now, do you have you? There is now a rule if it's simultaneous. So if you're in the action of shooting, that it actually will be called a goal. So if she was deemed to have been in the action of shooting then, and the and the goal went in, it would have been all clear. Um, yeah, so that it will remove earlier. that frustration of um, scoring uh, and having it come back. Quite an outside shot there. going to be an Auckland ball. Not sure. I think it was a cover. McPherson will get possession. Wills has been taking the foul. She's got Denethi helping her now with the ball. Nice clear. Finding space through Gatey. I can hear the 
fans calling all the way, all the way. <laughs> Sometimes it's not that easy. WA have done an excellent job of trying to stop that transition game. I can really see them getting in quickly and, and making sure that they have position in oh. front of goal. Great save. Izzy steps around, couldn't quite convert. Great save by Ruby Taylor. Zoe Chabanoff in the centre, but couldn't connect. McPherson cleaning that one up. WA looking to put pressure on early. And here's your girl, Izzy. It's the foul. There's a push. Quick rub of the kidneys there. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> Lucky you can buy them on the black market. Yeah, that's right, exactly. Lovely little slip. Yeah, unlucky Cut. she couldn't connect. It was a pass that's gone out of bounds, which means it will be a WA ball. Freya Payne to back that up. There's literally no one in the <laughs> defensive zone from Auckland, of sorry, of West Australia's defensive zone. They're already down the field yes. waiting. They seem to have quite an, or they're quite an organised team, Auckland. They seem to have a lot of strategy behind the setup. It's just sometimes the execution. Yeah. Um, but they look really organised in their setup for the ride. They're just not able to apply enough pressure to cause a turnover. Emma E looking to drive. Still got possession. Takes a shot. Oh, oh Em. Lovely. Emma's only been playing lacrosse for about four years, maybe five Fantastic. max. She is amazing. I think she nearly had contact with, with at least four defenders yeah. over that passage of play. She was a, like going to be a pro golfer, started playing lacrosse and was wow. like, nah, that's it. Another product of the Bayswater Lacrosse Club. Oh, is this Nicole? Yes, daughter. McKenna's daughter, yes. yeah. Yeah, we were having a chat about that the other day. Yep. Talking about being a golf mum. Yeah, well, not anymore. <laughs> She's now converted. Auckland have been playing that extra person over on the, their defensive yeah. side. The four um, and two. Yeah, all, d playing all a day. Game. If you can handle that pressure going into the offensive set, then it can be a good thing to cover that transition play. Yep. And that is the end of the first quarter. It looks like we've got a score of 4-2. Western Australia leading at this point of the game. It's been interesting, intense, and also quite physical so far. Any key takeaways at this point, Trish? I just think uh, probably for both teams, just they're letting themselves down just a little bit just with execution on passing. So mm -hmm. they've got some great play and then uh, right at the very last minute, um, just not able to convert on the pass, but, but brilliant intent um, and obviously amazing athleticism and they're working really, really hard. So if they can probably shorten up their passes just a little bit to be mm -hmm. able to connect those, I think they'll see a different result on the scoreboard which will make all that hard work and hustle worth it. So, um, but I'm really loving uh, the, like when the goal is a celebration um, yep. and, and it's clear that they really enjoy lacrosse and each other, which I absolutely love. So yeah. it's a great game so far. Yeah, loving that teamwork. Yeah. It's one of the best things about under 18 tournaments. I love seeing teams come together throughout a week. Um, and I, I, I haven't been able to watch as much of the men's games, but seeing how they celebrate each other and are so happy for each other when they yep. score goals and or create a turnover or make a save. Um, I think it's one of the best parts about lacrosse is the camaraderie. Yep. Um, and I just love seeing that, you know, alive and well in our under-18 yeah. championship. It's brilliant. Yeah, we would have seen a lot of that over the last 12 months. With Certainly. The sixes in the world championship last year. And I love seeing those girls celebrate. Absolutely. We had some huge goals last year with Beck Lane, Georgia Latch, putting some numbers on the board. Yeah, they're pretty incredible. They are. So many of them now over at college too. Yes. Yeah. Well, which is good. Coaching and playing. Yeah, I was going to say we've got a lot coaching at the moment, yep. um, but also also playing Ocean, Georgia, Bonnie, loads Abby. of girls over there. Abby, of course. Can't forget Abs. And a few more going. Yeah. A few on their way. As we start the second quarter. Auckland will be shooting to the right of our screen. Western Australia shooting to the left. Corey Rainey taking the centre against Denimthi. Corey's obviously one of WA's young talents. Yes, she's amazing. She's just 15. It's incredible. I know. I love to see it. I mean, and another young, is there another young? 
the young 15-year-old Payne for... Uh, Freya Payne. Yep. Great. Yeah, she played for the Stars last year. Brilliant. Looks like a battle for the ball between Emma. Big hustle. Bennett's picked up that ball. Double coming quick from Western Australia. Miss pass. Is it going to hit that line? Get the back up. Oh, there. she's well got done. it. She stopped it. Immediate pressure. Love connecting the dots through there. The, the WA pressure is so great, but if they can just manage to get one or two passes and get it over the line. Webb with the ball. Webb looking to drive, dodging. Big crash by WA, which is going to give her a free space call. I love hearing that Kiwi accent on the field. That's just something different to bring another flair to lacrosse. Ruby Coswara with that foul. Under a lot of pressure, big save by Taylor. Buckman with the ball. To Coswara, a bit of a miss. Everyone wants it. Great pick up. Looking to go, peeling it out. She's got a push call. She's been really interested to see who run, like the percentage of running in as opposed to passing. Yep. Oh, unlucky on that one. V's going to back it up. Oh, it's going to get to the line. Well, how that's you gonna actually call a close it? one. Yeah, how are you going to call it? Going Auckland's way. McPherson with the ball. Finds Webb. Webb cruising through. Looking for a drive. There was a bit of a push charge there, but she's gotten away with it. There was a whistle. Yeah, they're going to call it no goal. Mm. And Webb will set up again. I can hear a little bit of confusion <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> about whether that should have been allowed to go. I think the whistle had well and truly gone before she started the action of shooting, which yeah. would which would mean the call is correct. Oh, but they convert a, anyway. What a beautiful goal. What a beautiful team goal. Is that Grace McCarthy? Yeah, found space in McCarthy. Beautiful. McCarthy just puts it in the back of the net. A little bouncer. I think the passing can often be a good option just in terms of moving the goalkeeper. Yeah, um, definitely. So I think that's there just had... The goalkeeper moving off the line and great conversion. Webb and McCarthy both have come off the field. And your SA Izzy, is what I'm going to call her, has gone <laughs> back on. Aretha also subbing for Auckland. Auckland still playing the four and two set up. So two men in their attack, sorry, two ladies in their attack <laughs> part of the field and four in the D. Ball rolling towards it's a restraining line foul by Western Australia, which gives the ball to Auckland. Moving the ball quite well. Oh, almost an intercept. Well by read. Bean. She's an amazing athlete. Big check by Wills. Across the arm. It's a tough, tough time to get a check in when you're collapsing like that. Yeah. Um, but so tempting. Mm. <laughs> Lucy loves a check. <laughs> she is part of the Wills family. Come yeah. On. <laughs> Box lacrosse is definitely going to be their jam. Oh, totally and utterly. Oh, big save. Looks like Izzy's cop one in the side, but play is continuing. Ball went to Coswara. She manages to clean that up. Finds Wills. Lovely composure from Wills there, copying a swipe from the side. A little stumble. Great face dodge. 
Duckworth converts and WA love it. The bench, the fans. Chloe Duckworth is from Wanneroo Lacrosse Club, Wanneroo Junior Lup. One of our northern suburbs girls. She's small, but she is mighty. <laughs> We set. So Love seeing a lot of rotation as well from the bench. There's a lot of movement. Yeah. Um, players really getting a, a good fair run, which I love. Yeah, I, even today, um, both teams in the Wakato and SA game were mm. making full bench yes. rotations, I noticed. I think I've noticed it throughout the week. Um, yep. It can be something at times which is called a little bit tighter, but I think nearly every state seems to have really full rotation, which I think is a really good sign in terms of depth. Yep, absolutely. Auckland just setting up their attack. Auckland, interesting with the two people playing Someone's tight down. on the low crease. Obviously a set play. Got a card coming out over here. Card is to Summer Buckman. You saw the Auckland play there. Two setting up in the crease and then just flying out in different directions to give a channel through yeah. the middle. <laughs> Nearly successful. Looking for someone. Oh, free space. Takes a shot. Yeah. It's amazing how well you can see it when you're not umpiring. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Yeah, oh, and the here. large the large arc actually makes it really difficult not to be in free space off of a free yeah. shot. It's because they're coming from those low goal line extended rather than um, on an angle yeah. on the previous fan. It's actually really difficult to get in without being in shooting space. Yeah, they can't. Really love that option of the pass off. Oh, um, what a goal. Great shot from Izzy. Obviously, playing an essay, serving her well. No discredit to the Auckland program. She's been a dominant player, I think, um, over there. And it's good for her to come, I think, and be challenged by different players, different types of play. Mm -hmm. um, in South Australia, I would say that it's a more physical play rather than stick checking. Yep. And so I think it's it's great to be challenged in different ways. And I think while she's probably had Dean as a coach before, I think just a totally different club environment. Yep. Um, and from all accounts, it sounds like she's having a great time in there, enjoying having her at Woodville. We've got some superstars out there. Olivia Parker's from Woodville, isn't she? She is, yes. Yeah, she is. I mean, if she's going to learn from her, they're the same height. So she's also got um, Holly, Dinny and Mare Inge that are playing for South Australia. So yes. they're, they're teammates... Um, back at Woodville, but yep. playing against each other in the competition here. But it's been great to see them get taking photos together after games yeah, beautiful. and supporting each other as well, which is what lacrosse is all about. Coswara with the ball. She's got three defenders in front of her. Looking for an outlet. Corey Rainey cutting in. She's taken the pressure. She's played on. They haven't stopped the play. I love the fact that Western Australia are a man down but still attacking with some aggression. Um, there's nothing worse than being scored on when you're man down. Yeah, I know, right? <laughs> and as a coach, don't you hate it? But it happens so often it as does. well. It does. I think you can often get stuck overplaying with the double team. Yep. And it, could, and and it and happens. And there it is. Yeah. <laughs> and there it is. And Corey loves it too. Corey Rainey with that goal. Oh, exciting. Yeah, I think it really confuses the defence of who's doing what, who's the... I mean, it's, communication is so important yes. when you're playing in defence on a man-up advantage. And they, um, they're they often thinking, we'll double-team, but we know there's someone coming, so they've got half an eye on the bench, and there's mm. there's just a lot to work out, a lot of dynamics. So yep. um, WA able to make the most of that situation. A few high-fives still going on in the <laughs> attacking side of the WA. When does your season start here in Western Australia? Tuesday. Tuesday. Well, Great. we're playing. Same. So WA, sorry, we, um, Wembley's playing Subiaco in the Anzac Day Clash. Yes. And then I think the following week is main, the following Sunday is the main. Oh, great take by Ruby. She wants a goal. She's heading in. She shoots. Fantastic finish. Ruby Koswara. There's certainly an increased confidence with Western Australia in terms of their hard drives to cage in this game. They're mm. being very direct rather than the sweeping drive. They're yeah. looking for a dodge and a very direct line to goal, which I think is really working to their advantage. Yep. It's 
Score is seven to four here on the Australian Lacrosse Network. This is Western Australia versus Auckland. Shando Oliver and Trish Adams here in commentary today. Got a comment in the Facebook comments from Hannah Stampalia. Yes, Chloe and Craig Nicholson. Let's go Auckland. So great to see that our friends from New Zealand are watching today because they can't be here. I know there's so much support from people either in New Zealand or in other parts of Australia watching. It's so fantastic that Australian Lacrosse Network's able to provide the lacrosse for them to watch from wherever they are. Yeah, it's incredible. We had people online earlier from the US and Canada. Fabulous. I was like, if anyone wants to recruit any of our girls, let us know. <laughs> I know we've got a few scouts over there anyway. We do. We certainly do. Emma E lining up. She's got a couple of options as well, but she's going to take a shot. Great she's save. eaten up by the keeper there. Hardiman. McPherson with the ball again. A lot of pressure there from Lucy Wills. Loving that ride pressure, getting them in that back corner. Maddie Carroll has a little dip. Oh, unfortunately there she couldn't connect, but she's kept it in play. Got the ground ball, push. From Bira Getty. Fantastic effort to keep that in play. It yeah, looked like she got a little bit blocked by the umpire there for a quick moment, so. Oh, nice eaten up block. by Crane. Beautiful. Mara's stick work over the last six months has improved out of sight, as I say that. She <laughs> rolls the ball out the bag of the stick. But um, from last season to this season, Mara has just been phenomenal. I've enjoyed watching her play this week um, and seems to have a real maturity around her stick work and, mm. and play, which is fabulous to watch. Yeah, watching her from last season to the Sixers tournament early, about three or four weeks ago, I just couldn't believe the, the change. Improvement. Yes. Oh, great little pick up and finish. WA girls are really enjoying this game today. That was Nikki Carson who put that one in the back of the net. Up and about for this final regular round match. Auckland just having a bit of a debrief in the defensive zone. Auckland would have to be feeling it. It is a warm day yes. and this is their second game Absolutely. for the day. So they would certainly be having to feel the effects of the heat. Um, absolutely brilliant for the spectators, a little bit less so when you're out there running around. 100%. We've got Marina S Sam Montry watching from London. Go Auckland. Amy Hodges, great save Auckland. Trelawney Floyd, well done Ruby. So we've got a battle for the ground ball. It's a pre-check. It's going to go the way of Auckland. Lucy with a foul again. <laughs> Lucy loves a check. There hasn't been a whistle. Fantastic stick work, but I think the whistle went when she was a outside good the fan. 15 metres yeah. back. <laughs> <laughs> We've got the clock on the field as well, so we're just about at half time. Looks like they oh, no, that was that. the whistle. Oh, that was what the whistle was for. Yep. So we'll take a short break. While we're on break, we'll chuck in some first half highlights and um, we'll be back for the second half. You're watching live and free on the Australian Lacrosse Network.
Welcome back to the third quarter of this last game of pool play in the 2023 Under-18 Australian Lacrosse National Championships. Again, my name is Shando Oliver and I'm joined by Trish Adams on special comments as we see Western Australia taking on Auckland. Uh, the score is currently 8-4 as we set up to begin the third quarter. Players look ready. Umpires are still kind of hanging out, but surely we'll be getting going soon. Girls are obviously super keen. They're going to make the most, the umpires, of, yeah. of every minute of their break. Yeah, totally. I wonder they earn it. <laughs> they do. Absolutely, they do. It's great to see some young, new, fresh faces out there umpiring at the under-18 level. Yeah, it is. Skylar Levy over on a right of screen is from the Bayswater Lacrosse Club, and she's really getting into the, the umpiring, which is awesome to see. Fantastic. And Tracy Philippa to the left um, from the Woodville Lacrosse Club in South Australia. I believe this is her first under-18 oh, awesome. national championship. Yeah, great. So we're setting underway. Rainey going for that ball, has come up with it. Finds Freya Payne inside, takes a shot. The confidence in that pass was just fantastic. I love seeing that level of trust in teammates. Yeah. Um, but a great save. The goalkeeper had fantastic positioning and line there. Yep. Didn't really have to move too much to make the save, but the save started with the great set and position. Corey looking to feed to Wills. Couldn't make it and balls rolled out of play. WA getting down the field pretty quickly. As the ball's brought back in. Crane read that like a book. Great speed. She's looking for an opportunity. Will she be Just in the crease? Just ran out of room there, I think, at the end. Oh, she must be gutted. Mara is from the Alchemos Lacrosse Club. So Alchemos is only about a four or five year old lacrosse club here in WA. So to see that they're starting to get players from, you know, being nothing th four or five years ago into um, a state team is great for them. And really setting their juniors up for some success in the future. It's just amazing. I believe her, her cousin plays for the South Australian team, Kate Osborne. Oh, really? Is um, So they've been sharing some family time. And yesterday, a couple of fouls on each other. Oh, that's <laughs> nice. Just bashing a cousin. Really great D there by WA. They're really looking. Go, Soph. They're really looking for the intercept. Soph's one of my girls out of Wembley. Oh, fabulous. So I can't help but I give her a little cheer. Um, Love that she was looking for that quick start. I will say probably something that I think we could improve as a country is, is being able to recognise the opportunity for those. Yeah. Seen it used really well in a couple of examples. Um, but I think it's something we can continue to work on and improve on. Yeah. Crane looking to go on her left. Fallen down. There's heads, bodies flying everywhere. Playing on. Umpire has called time. Two players lying in the crease. I don't think there's a call there. Maybe just time for them to get up and collect themselves. Crane looking like she's hurting a little bit. She's And the ball will be turned over and heading back in Auckland's direction. WA coaching staff asking for WA to slow it down and get some some long periods of possession in attack. Sorry, the ball's going back West Australia's way and has been given to Veronica Keane. She's a lovely natural style, doesn't she? Yeah. It's beautiful to watch. Gets the ball to Emma E, but she can't. You see the tiredness start to set in and a couple of uncharacteristic errors yep. without pressure. Mm -hmm. um, and I think that's why you'll be hearing from the WA coaching staff to hold on to it for a little bit. Um, sometimes the tempo just staying at one pace. So got the big Lovely run. look. I know, and, and what a finish. finish. This is the type of lacrosse we were seeing earlier today yeah. from Auckland. Yep. The little slips underneath and really focusing on that transition match. Yep. WA have done a good job blocking it up until now, um, but it's lovely to see them convert there. Yep, I'm getting some comments actually just on the Wembley team page saying WA have really lifted their intensity and now Auckland have two. Yes. Oh. 
Amy Hodges is on the comment saying Auckland, like it's a lot of and then Nick Sned and let's go WA as we reset for the centre. You're in the third quarter, the score is 8-5, Western Australia leading. Good draw. Veronica Keane's come up with that one. Quite a swipe there on the back yeah, end. Yeah, I know. From she used her shoulders beautifully pr to protect and, and box out there. Um, so was able to get away quickly. Ruby Coswara looking for a little drive, but has decided to pull the ball out. Got the ball to Duckworth. Duckworth couldn't connect. And the ball's been flicked in to the keeper. No. It's Dangerous territory right there in front. I Hopefully know. she can escape that space. Not the space you want to turn the ball over in. She's got Ava Gatey. Yeah, she's found her. WA going to need to cover a couple of people back in behind them there, but they look to have made the adjustment. And Kate, and Kate is making the same call there. <laughs> like you said, it's a lot easier to see it from the sidelines sometimes yeah. than, than when you're on the field. Uh -huh. So... And we're from that higher angle too. Like I can see from this perspective why an AFL coach would want to coach up here. But also for me, I'd want to be down there yelling at yes, my players. Absolutely. I don't, I, don't, I don't know if there's any other sport in the world where the umpire goes up, the coach go, sorry, goes up into a player's box away from the players. Uh, I'd, I, I watch it and, and know it just wouldn't be for me. Yeah, <laughs> I couldn't handle it either. I want to be able to talk to my players, yeah. not be on the phone like, hey. I think that's one of the most lovely things about lacrosse is the connection you get to have with them on the field. and. Mm. Um, This Ruby Braithwaite setting up for the free shot. Great little cross pass. Finds Webb. And Webb's able to convert. Beautiful goal. I'm really a huge fan of, of the passing off of the free shot with this big 15 metre arc. Yeah. I just think getting the goalkeeper moving off of their line. Uh, and if you've got the traditional setup of one covering the stick and one covering the body plus the foul, you've actually got a five on three situation around yeah. the rest of the arc. So. There's lots of gaps and holes to find, but there's a lot of experimentation happening here at this Nationals because yep. this is the first time we've played with that bigger arc space. Mm. It's good, I think, for us to watch as coaches too to see Absolutely. what we can do. And from this angle, I mean, we trained on that uh, that fan last night, but um, yeah, to be able to see it and see what you can do and how you can move the ball Absolutely. effectively is, is good for a bit of pre-season. And how you can set up and negotiate that space as an offensive unit. Yeah. Um, Defensively, it's going to be a lot more challenging for teams. Playing something like a zone or a backer is, in my opinion, going to be next to impossible. Yep. So um, it's it's going to force us to become better one-on-one -on -one defenders. Uh, but from an offensive perspective, if you use that space well, it's going to be really difficult to slide um, and cover. So it'll be interesting to see how much it changes scores in games, whether yep. scores open right up, whether teams make adjustments. Um, and it's a coach's dream, really, to have some new strategy to work with. Yeah. Um, looking forward to it. Yeah. Me too. When I first heard that we were playing with this 15 minute arc, I was like, oh my God. But actually, after seeing it in action and what we can do, yeah, I'm not really a good defensive coach, so I'll be <laughs> handing that one over to Hoggy. But I think um, from an attack perspective, there's just so much area. It's an attacker's dream. Yeah. I look at it at the moment and it can almost convince you to get back out there and play. Have you retired from playing? I uh, look, the for the most on. part, mate, I, every now and again you you play to, to fill up some numbers or to help a team out, but I'm, for the most part, retired and focused on coaching, Okay, I was which is say, definitely where I should be. <laughs> every time I see Jen home on your socials, uh, you Jen and I, we're, we're the... very tempted for a game together. I won't lie about that. When she's back and lacrosse does enable you to play really at any age and to get out there and have some fun, but it's usually in Division 1 or 2, which... Um, and it's just a, a bit of fun with our mates. Yeah, um, nice. And, and we love it, so... That one won't be a legal draw, so it didn't go up and over their heads or shoulders. It's quite a way to go with Corey, though. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> She's certainly got some height so on there. She's so tall. I mean, her mum, Mel, is so tall, so it makes sense that her mum's a netballer. Yes, she's involved in some high-performance netball, is that yeah, right? Yeah, she yes. is, yep. yep. And obviously Nathan's an ex-Australian lacrosse player, yes. her dad, so going to be a great athlete, but also a tall, great athlete. For such a young player, she's certainly had presence and, and some dominating play here at the tournament. So yeah. that's been great to see. Yeah, I think she was the highest goal scorer as well last year at the under-15s. Wow. Fabulous. 
Ruby Coswara moving the ball around to the back of goals <laughs> for WA. Small shove there at the yeah, end. Yeah, just a little casual nudge. Emma E looking to drive. McPherson playing some solid defence. I think that push might have been picked up that you mentioned, yeah, Trish. Yeah, calling that one back. Ruby's going to get a shot from the 15. Ruby looks really comfortable handling pressure. What club is she Wembley, in? but I Wembley. think she's going to be playing for Subi this year. I'm not 100% no. sure, but Great. I mean, she is a product of Wembley Lacrosse Club. Proud. Her brothers both <laughs> played for Australia. Some people might have seen Lucas playing under 20s last year or under 21s. Great. I did recognise the surname. Yep. And Sam played in the one before that, her older brother. Happens a little bit in lacrosse. Surname's yeah. making a... Uh, a dominant, fa it's a family sport, that's yeah, for sure. That's the thing, your kids are Mangan, so that's well known, but also you guys are Adam, so there's like, either yeah, it's way. Yeah, throwing people through the loop, actually. A couple of people said to me, I thought your daughter was playing in this tournament, um, and she is, but surname, different surname, Mangan. Yeah, but Mangan's also a big lacrosse name, you know what I mean? So, it is, yeah. Like with Mango, so it's like, well. <laughs> oh, great intercept. Excellent. Oh, sorry, that wasn't an intercept. Just a grab. Just, <laughs> Just a, a good great grab. pass. Looking inside for a little pass. Finds it. Takes a shot. Goes high over the top bar. Backed up by Auckland. One of the things that Auckland tend to do is stay top side of the goal for a long time. So yeah. they don't have someone getting behind for the outlet early. Sometimes it might be... It was close to not being their ball on, on the shot. Yep. Look how wide they're playing this attack. An attacker's dream with all that space to, to drive into. WA coaching asking them to asking their players to push the ball and that's when Ruby just stepped in on Danithi. It's actually a great backside chase there. She would need to have rolled out to have hit that player back in behind her. So some, actually, some really smart play. This is an example of when a quick start could have been quite useful. Yeah, absolutely. But we're waiting for the whistle. And there's a foul. Kozawara's been called for a push. Sorry, Buckman's been called for a push. Lucy Wills to her left. And they've also got, um, Auckland have also got a player. But she's going to go straight to Cage. Takes a shot. Big save by Taylor. Picked up by Auckland. Oh, nicely defended. Chloe Duckworth wants that ball. And she's calling to Corey, who's <laughs> Corey Rainey, who's at the bench, just saying, I'm here. Bit of a fumble by Wills, but Corey is still available for her if she wants her. Auckland defence coming in now. Finds Duckworth again. Couldn't connect on that pass. Ground ball to be won. It's going to be an Auckland ball. There we go. Quick start in play. Love it. Finds one inside. It's unfortunate. That was Ava Gady. Great positioning there defensively. Good. Zoe Seawright with the ball. Bit of a fumble, but she's ret retained possession. Finds Neathy. She's, oh, I was going to say she's kept it Close. in, but Jazz has just Huge smile on her face there. Yeah, <laughs> she's she chasing knew. that ball. Duckworth with the ball, bringing it back in for Western Australia. Rainey just looking to run past. Gets pushed out of bounds. Looks like it's Auckland's ball. Yep, Auckland will bring it back in. As, um... Auckland start making their way down the field to find that attacking advantage. McPherson with the ball. Oh, really unlucky there. I, know. I really do think the exhaustion has set in. started to set in a little bit. A yeah. couple of small fumble errors we certainly weren't seeing this morning, mm. um, but that is to be expected. They've done extremely well to back it up with two games I know, that's uh, in a row. That is really challenging. At this level as well. You exactly. Know, it's not, we're not playing club lacrosse. We're playing mm. national lacrosse now. Playing a really solid Victorian unit and now another, you know, WA side that certainly found their rhythm towards the end of the regular schedule. So, Saved by Hardyman. What a... 
Little check. Must have been a little bit too close there, but she did yeah. take her time and try and stay outside of the... Webb with the ball. Webb got a few West Australians crashing in around her. Oh, Kozwara trying to slow that play down. She's going to slow that it down with a card. That one's definitely coming back. <laughs> yeah. She must have been getting tired. She needs a small break. She's going to be taking a two-minute break. And um, Auckland will play with a two-minute man-up advantage. Looks like the clock's on the field, so they'll play out this quarter and then head in again. Turnover by Duckworth. She's had a few good ones the last She's been, had real presence in this game, um, both ends of the field. Crane running the ball Fantastic down. Fantastic work. I love the change of hands yeah. you're seeing with her. And that is time on the third. Such a close match, 8-6. Yeah, it's so good to watch. Got Sasha Alish, great cut girls. Isabel Allen up the fence. I'm not sure what that up means. Up the fence. It says up the fence. <laughs> <laughs> oh, look, I'll oh, take it. Up the it. defense? Yeah, maybe. I don't know. I'm not up with the lingo. I'm not good with um with all the terms. Yeah, me not neither. Not cool enough. Yeah, uh, yeah, me neither. I'm like, I don't know what that one means. But anyway, keep your comments. We need coming. someone under the age of up the fence. I don't even know what that is, but eighteen, obviously. <laughs> Trish, we're getting on. <laughs> I'm certainly doing that. Oh, no. Some conversations happening here with the coaches at this break. Kate Hooper from Western Australia asking some questions of the umpires. She's talking a lot with her hands, but I don't know what she... <laughs> some big gestures from Kate. Yeah. I think it's, it's great, these opportunities, I think... Um, as a coach, sometimes you just need a little bit of clarification mm -hmm. on the way things are being called. And I think it's great when both coaches are able to come in and have things explained to you. I think it's it's supposed to be a question, never a statement in there. Yep. Um, but there's always a good way of asking, <laughs> making a statement and asking a question in the same. Yep. I've, I've perfected the art over time. Um, Teach me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Teach me your ways. Um, but it looks like, yeah, they've obviously got a little bit to ask about out there. So. Yeah. There's a lot of nodding. <laughs> I'd love to know. Feel free to leave comments what, about what you think they're talking about. Perhaps they're making dinner plans for later after the game. Yes, I really like Chinese. I'd love to go. <laughs> All right, we'll see you there. You know those little voiceover things that you see on TikTok? <laughs> where they're like making the comments up from the tennis yes, players. Yeah. I was like, is that what's just happened? I love it. At least if you get anything out of this game, it's a bit of comedy. Trish and I are trying... I'm not sure um, the Auckland coach contributor, though. I think Kate did most of the talking yeah. there. So. But I think she's going to dinner later. Yes, Kate's definitely going. Auckland coach still deciding. Yeah. So we're on 30 seconds. Comments really quiet today on the feed. I guess a lot of West Australians are here watching the game. What's the time difference in... Five hours, I think, in Auckland ahead. Yeah, right. So we're, I think we're an hour and a half behind SA. Correct, yes. And then I think they're five, so it's two to Vic and then three more mm. yeah. in New Zealand. Because I found that really hard when I went over on holidays trying to work out what time <laughs> was to call home. I'm still waking up at 5 a.m. here, so Oof. I've decided I'm not even going to try and get on WA time. I'm just going to stick with it. Do you know what it's get like when the week. you go to, like for us going to Melbourne, so when we went for senior nationals last year, just trying to get up at a time so it's 9 a.m. but it's really difficult yeah. yeah it's a challenge yeah it's only a few hours but it really does impact you and it's a short week to get organized yep. so and the only I guess the advantage is you get to stay out later yeah <laughs> on a night out you would quite enjoy that yeah. it's only <laughs> it's only 10 a.m. when you're going you know 10 a.m. going to bed at home we've got a oh card dear. here looks like we've got another card here V is going to take a seat for two minutes I think that one was accidental no, she doesn't look happy. But s some strong defence coming in for IWA. How's the crash? Their crash defence has actually been really strong in this game. I think they've done a good job of collapsing the in when the ball's coming. Oh, lovely. They found one inside through Sophia Webb, and that was a beautiful goal. Way to keep your head up, find that option. It's a great example of something I talk about often in when there's a collapse in defence you know, backing out and then re-attacking on the opposite side. Yep. Um, so it's difficult for the defence to recover after they've all crashed and collapsed. 
They've re-extended. If you attack on the opposite side, it can be really challenging, and that's a great example of that. Yeah, Some great well. play from Auckland. Did it well. Things have tightened right up. Yep, and WA have still got those players <laughs> off. WA playing two players down still. It's a tough challenge for a defence in a massive arc. Yeah, with four players. So if they can get possession here, that would be... Super handy. Really handy for them. Otherwise, Auckland are going to continue to capitalise on this advantage. Who's going to come up with this ball? Oh. A few sticks flying, but it's going to come up through Webb. They've gone offside. They're back on. <laughs> they are. The shot oh. and a goal. Does that level it up? It does. Through Cano. I know she was a big influence in this morning's game. Finds the back of the net again, and that will make us eight all. They must have heard me make a comment about them starting to fade a little and they're just going to prove me wrong. Totally. It's all you, Trish. I know. They've got someone at home watching the yeah. game and texting the coach <laughs> and being and like, saying, hey. I'd love to prove that person wrong. Let, get, let me at it. Hopefully WA can find that real strong drive um, to the cage, but they'll need possession yep. now to regain some control. WA still man down, although it looks like we're about to get back to even. It's amazing how quickly those two minutes go. Yep. I feel like she just stepped off the field, but with a running clock, it, it does move pretty quickly. WA's going to get possession. And we're even again. And Veronica's just cruising down that left side like, I'm sneakily here. Bit of a fumble. Picked up by Wills. Looking inside, finds Coswara, couldn't connect. Lovely grab ball pick up. Yeah, it was beautiful. It's difficult. Oh, and it latent. There's some physicality lockdown. happening out there. Not sure if the camera would have caught that one if the, they were on the ball, but that's that's some physical play. Yeah, Caitlin Douglas Bell really copped it there. We've got this is a pretty easy. dangerous person to have on the free position for a self start. Hope she gets up okay. WA really held their ground there, though. They did. And, again, a, a great collapse. Um, Recognised that she was going hard from the self-start and managed to get their bodies in the way. Oh, Lovely stick there. Crane. Crane just reads the ball so well. Gets the ball downfield to Koswara. She's got Emma E inside if she can get it to her. Oh, no, it wasn't Emma E, sorry. It was Maddie, Maddie Carroll. I can hear the coaches really encouraging them to slow things yeah. down and get it around, but we see an option in the middle and look to take it. Oh, saved by Hardiman, running the ball out of the defence. Now, through Chapman. I'm really oh, impressed with... big knockdown. 33, Kano... Shugawara. I'm really impressed with her play today. Yeah, she she just goes really hard at the ball um, and at the contest. Yeah, she's obviously very athletic. She definitely, she's got straight back up off that one. Stick balls rolling towards the end line, but picked up by Auckland. Coach is calling for some body position defence from Western Australia. Ball is going to go the way of Auckland. Auckland setting up now on the 15. Girls trying to obviously find positions of where they've been told to set. We've got Denethi across field, and it looks like she can see her because she's like she's going for a. Well, she has been moved back towards a centre hash. It's quite a. Oh. Looking for an Didn't option. go where I thought it was going yeah, to. <laughs> I, I was looking at Denethi, and they went to Izzy instead. Strong D, but that's going to be a push. By Koswara. Kano is going to come up with the ball. But to watch the quick start here. I think they're quite switched onto it. Yeah, particularly with um, McCarthy sitting there. There she yes. is. Oh, just hits the pipe. Hits the poke. And Kano with the ball again. There is just continual pressure being placed on the WA defence, and they're doing a, a great job coming up over and over again. We've got a foul. Skylar Levy's seen something and she's going to set up on the 15 with Denethi with the ball. I think the foul is on Mara Crane. 
just got Kano sitting in the middle again. Yes. It's a free space call. Yep. Something you don't see all the time these days is the changing of hands. So I think they've done a brilliant job today of seeing pressure and being able to change hands, even if it's just for long enough to get out of the, the pressure. McCarthy at X with the ball, bringing the ball back into play. Veronica Keane matching up on her. Oh, they've got Cano in the middle. Literally no one on her. Lovely goal. And there it is. Beautiful. Top. I guess it was just under the pipe in the middle. She literally ran in out of nowhere, found some space, and took advantage. Unfortunately, Western Australia probably had a good solid four minutes of, yeah. <laughs> or three minutes of defensive play there. So it was probably likely going to find a gap eventually. Yeah. Um, I would say just keep peppering and eventually you'll find a crack and they've, they've done just that. Western Australia are going to have to come up with a centre possession here so they can try and regain some control. Yep. I can see the coaching staff trying to get them up and about. Yeah, they've got Rainey on the outside and put Coswara in the centre. Lucy Will's also been moved to a wing there. Just trying to identify, I think you've got SA Izzy on the other wing for Auckland. I love that she's got a nickname that, <laughs> even though she's from Auckland. And Cano in the centre comes there up we with go. the ball. Corey Rainey. Great. Nikki Carson with the ball. Interesting Looking to see if they slow up or go straight in. I guess time is of the essence. I guess what coaches need to be saying now is let's not panic. We've got time. Veronica Keane comes up with it. And these are the moments that really help shape young lacrosse players facing pressure situations yep. and, and different scenarios. Yep. She finds Great one look. in Nikki. Got about four and a half minutes left in this game. Great, we're gonna have that pulled back. Opportunity for WA to level the scores. Yep. Nikki Carson with the ball. She's got Corey Rainey to her right. It's actually just a tough pass to make through a stick. Yeah. So from a tactical point of view, sometimes maybe if Corey just gave herself a little bit of a more angle um, for her to be able to hit that pass if she recognized no defender there. With the ball. Look. They're really going after both teams going after hard after these ground balls now. They want to compete. They're, it's desperation. The crowd is coming alive. They're up and about. That's great. Coswara looking. Space. She's got so many players. Takes a shot. Back it up. And Chabonoff will bring the ball back into play from Western Australia. I see the same level of pressure being faced on the Auckland defence now, so see how they hold up. Yep. WA trying to take control here. Corey Rainey looking to Some step space around. space there. Steps around. Backed up by Chabanoff. She's Courtney Ackland's cousin. Which one was that, sorry? Number two with the Oh, ball. number two. Great. A very, very pregnant Courtney. Yes. <laughs> Oh, I thought that one went in. But Auckland's it's just going to get past. that back up. Auckland possession. It's, it's so exciting. The energy down here is becoming pretty electric. The hill is full of Western Australian supporters. Yep. Hopefully they can get them up and about. But loving seeing the fight back of Auck Auckland managing to turn this scoreline around. Yep, and they found one. Into and, the, and Taylor's come out and made a huge save late in the game. Love the team play that we're seeing from Auckland. They're finding those extra passes. Yep. Great little slip on the bottom corner. Auckland were offside. Western Australia's recognised it, but the umpires didn't see it on time. I could hear it. Coaches and <laughs> are not impressed. <laughs> but doing a good job of disguising it. Yeah. Kate's pretty loud. <laughs> Izzy with the ball. Interesting to see how Auckland respond here, whether they continue to try and apply pressure or wait for WA to come out and try and get it. It's quite a long time to... Play keepy off. This is where I think we need to really think about if we're going to bring the shot clock rule into FIL lacrosse, or sorry, world lacrosse. Yes. Um, you know, with sixes, with box lacrosse, there is no option uh -oh. to hold the ball. We've got a yellow-red happening here, and... 
confused. Summer Buckman. I didn't see anything. Out of the game, which means Western Australia will finish this game playing man down. Must have been an off play. Yeah, push or something. I think Izzy might take the risk here given the situation, but we'll wait and see. Oh, that will be a turnover. Oh, wow. A missed start on the whistle is, is a turnover, um, as unfortunate as it is. So Western Australia off to the races. She's got two in front of her. She's just got to find someone open. V will probably look to drive. She's got Chabanoff on the corner, which she's seen. Found her. Man down goal. Mm. That's their second man down goal yeah. of the game. Look how happy they are. Auckland kind of scratching their heads saying, I absolutely love, from? love games like this. That just, it's pure determination. Yeah, it's hard to stay calm when it's your home state. Yeah. That's why I didn't ask you to do the SA game. You've done well. Yeah, I am I would have been terrible. Yeah. yeah. And that's why I don't try and get I actually anyone. did have a work colleague come down for today's game. So I, was, I, I had to talk to her for most of the game. Um, explain it. Yeah, and explain it. Um, it was probably a good thing given the amount of cards that we were given. So it was um, <laughs> kept me calm and, and busy. Western Australian ball here. Lovely pick up and a swipe from the back that's going to be called back and likely a yellow card. She's already left before she gets yeah. the card out. She knew. Which means we're playing equal on the field now, which will be... Equal score, equal players. Makes for a good game of lacrosse. Buckman trying to find an opening. Just a little face dodge past. She's got Carson at the back, which she's decided to use. There's Look a at all huge the load of energy coming here. from the sidelines here. It's just amazing. Steps inside. Oh, fabulous save. That Cardigan. was tracked really well. Mm. That's going to be goalkeeper's ball. We've got a couple of people fighting after that. That's her space only. Just trying to see how much time we've got left in the broadcast or in the game. It would need to be not long. The one thing we can't see is those little old school cards that they put down that is the yellow and the red. <laughs> so we yeah. know how much I time know, is I left. We still use them here Such in an old school. Do you? Yeah, we've still got them no to flip way. over things. Yeah. That is hilarious. Do you have a little bell when it's 30 no, seconds? Or no, no, we don't no? have a bell. Okay. But just those, so they count down the time. The they little flip. Over. Wow. Yeah. We've still got it. Oh, you can see it down there. On the, see the little tree Yeah, square? I see it. I just didn't know it still existed. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, we've got them. So handy. Jane, uh, Jan's just flipped something over, but I don't know what it is. Yeah, so I Could think that be two minutes? I think we're on 30 because I can 30. see the umpires up. So oh, I don't my know goodness. We're going to go into overtime here. Wouldn't that be exciting? That's just what we need. Get the defib out. <laughs> She's stepping around. Cano's looking to shoot. There's going to be a whistle and, and another, another card. card. Wow. They're going to get sore arms today, the umpires, I can hear from the lift. <laughs> I can hear assistant coach Deb Manu from WA saying, girls, you're going to give me a heart attack. <laughs> I just called for the defib, Deb. Hopefully WA can see there's a huge gap over here with no player covered. Yep. Sorry, that was actually Ruby Coswara with that card. And a big, big save. Mara Crane running the ball out. Uh, two players Drawing down, so... Looking to move the ball early. Looking for Rainey. Straight into the stick of... Oh, this is time, so I think. Seems a bit... And everyone's like, what? Climatic. Yeah. So <laughs> what do we do? <laughs> the crowd are wondering. Yeah. So for those watching Everyone's home, asking. I believe we get two minutes of timeout or two minutes to regroup. Just waiting for what the rule is. I'm not sure if it's three minutes and three minutes or golden goal. We'll find out for you. We'll be back in just a moment.
and we can confirm that there won't be two minutes of play each side. It is actually a golden goal. So Trish, we're in for a bit of a treat. Will it be quick or will it be a long pool of play? Super exciting. I love that um, the game that I'm involved in the commentary with, we get to we yeah. get to work in this situation. Amazing. And I think this is a deserved uh, result really for us mm. to come down to because both teams at times have shown that intensity and effort and determination. So I think um, it's fantastic it comes down to this. Yeah, it's just for me. Of course, you're as hoping a West for Australian. <laughs> like, yes, oh. you're doing very well Rain at staying it calm it. and composed. Well done. You, uh, it congratulations. Um, I know. Um, now I'm like, maybe also about just, you're going solo, Trish. I do think they are still going to be player down mm -hmm. for a couple of, yeah, for at well, least a little going well, in. Because WA's got the red card, it's a five minute. Yeah. So the, and I then they had another one that came in at about with maybe a minute thirty yeah. left. So, um, yeah, Ruby. So we've got Summer Buckman out and Ruby Coswara on a yellow, which means WA starting with two players off. It's pretty tough, but they have shown they can do it. We've had yeah. two goals already today, uh, so they're well within reach. And the energy is solid. It's just going to be the possession. That centre possession is really vital. Yeah. Be interesting to see who they choose to put in there from both teams. Mm. Deninthi has been um, from Auckland has been on fire all day, really strong in that centre, and obviously SA Izzy too. Um, SA Izzy off the wing is is really dangerous, um, but also from the centre as well. <laughs> SA so Izzy, be interesting. Yes. yeah, SA Izzy. I love that. <laughs> I love that for her. That's what she's called. Now. She's probably not going to love it. She might want to own her own um, heritage, heritage, but that's okay. For all those girls back home. She is now SA Izzy. We are claiming her. <laughs> Trish is claiming her. Absolutely. How long is she playing in Australia for? Do you know? Uh, she ha came over in January. Yep. Um, and she went back to prepare for this a little bit. Um, but is definitely here for the regular season. So, yep. And then after that, I'm not completely sure. What a great experience for an 18-year-old yep. to come over and spend some time in a different country. Um you know, becoming familiar with, a, I guess, a different brand and style of lacrosse. Um, so I think that will advance that, but also just a great life experience. Yeah. So amazing that lacrosse can pr provide those pathways for people and, and opportunities as it does with college scholarships and yeah. all types of things. I think it is, it's one of the things I use when recruiting kids is talking about the pathways and opportunities that are available in lacrosse. I think they're absolutely fabulous, whether mm -hmm. it comes to a national championship like this, an under 15 um, tournament or under 20s like we have coming up in the, in the next couple of months. So. Yeah. Yeah, it's super exciting. I'm, I mean, the opportunities that we've both had through lacrosse. Oh, absolutely. I know one of the girls from Wembley is actually over playing for the Netherlands in the She Box tournament this week. Wow, so fabulous. She just went over to travel and has wound up playing with the Netherlands and going to play in that box tournament. She's been texting me saying, what do I need to know? Yes. And I've been saying it's kind of like sixes with heaps of bar checks. Yeah. I think it's fabulous that there's so many different um, formats. formats of the game now. So we've yeah. got box lacrosse, sixes, indoor lacrosse, field lacrosse. Um, and while that can seem a lot for, for the numbers we have here in Australia, I think that gives people options. Yep. Um, and, and having that Olympic pathway now hopefully is, is going to be a, a huge positive for us in yep. terms of recruitment. So can't wait to see where it goes. Yeah, it's also going to make us better. Absolutely. We've got more chances yeah. to play, more chances to pick up our sticks. Oh, Corey Rainey The more lacrosse, the better, I say. Me too. Always. Get a stick in your hand. Come out of retirement. Are Auckland also one down? or Yes, they are. Izzy is also. Yeah. SA Izzy is also on a yellow. Yes. Sorry. So they will just be one down. <laughs> so WA starting with one in attack, three in D. Auckland starting with two in attack. It's just three mismatches everywhere. I know. It's confusing for counting, hey? Yeah. Normally it's just three, three, three. <laughs> and we've drawn. Huge possession coming up here. Looks like Corey's. Rainey. We're moving the ball forward. The double's coming now. So she's got to get it over that restraining line. Pressure's just got to her a tiny really bit. Really well maintained on the front side defensively. Yep. Denise again looking for Cano. Couldn't connect, but found support in the car. Great ground ball there. Emma E with that ground ball. And looks like we've got V Veronica Keane back on the field. With a shot from Emma E. She's got V at X. If, if V can take this drive, this could be a huge opportunity, but she's going to take it slow. She's not. I can see her shaking her head. This That's not the time I'm going to go. She's going to have a little bit more time with it. Yep. Emma looking to crash. Shoot. Oh, oh, there we go. 
West Australia win it. Kate's holding back the players who are very keen to get on the field and celebrate with their teammates. And the rest of West Australia. She's waiting run, for yeah. the call and off they go. How fantastic. Yeah. Absolutely love that. So I could see that um, Western Australia were really qu keen to get in there quickly and obviously Emma E was just keen to be the one to finish it off. I think she had a shot early on, yep. got the ball back again and off she went. I know, she's going to be a local hero. Fabulous. Oh, she is. She's being chairlifted. <laughs> <laughs> oh, absolutely fabulous. Hopefully oh. Auckland can see that that was an absolutely fabulous game on their behalf yeah. and a, a really close result and one that they can be extremely proud of. I loved watching them fight their way back into the game. And had they not played a game earlier on, um, might have just had a little bit more legs in the middle of the game there, but absolutely fabulous. Yep. Your thoughts on MVPs, Trish? Look, I find MVPs really difficult not being the coach and understanding, you know, things that have been, um, set. I guess, yeah, set. Uh, number 33, is it Kano? Yes, although I think she got it this morning in the first game. Okay, so she's unlikely from that perspective, but I think she was very dominant yep. um lots of play in there um Denethi as well Denethi, yeah number 35 she was very solid um and Izzy SA Izzy had a lot of great play as well yeah oh she looks a bit upset yeah okay. it's tough when you've been the person to get a card um yeah not just there. that but losing a, a, a national game like yeah this, absolutely at, and it shows they care margin. you yeah. know they, they care about it which is brilliant yeah. so um, and they are still under 18 girls we can yeah. forget about that sometimes the pressure of things um can get to you but hopefully they can hold their heads high they've, they've done an incredible job yeah yeah uh from western australia that's a tough one so many great contributions yeah you got anyone in mind oh uh, i think ruby coswara played well today really strong in the defense mara crane as well yeah um it's it's hard to pick i mean emma obviously is winning that Scoring that winning goal at the end, but that's you know not, that's not the whole game. Mm. Um, so let's just watch and find out. Find out. We'll be a bit quiet for a moment just because we're watching, and we'll tell you once we know who the players are. <laughs> Auckland doing their cheers. Beautiful sportsmanship by both teams. Kate just about to announce the MVP for Auckland. There's a big tent in our ways. Trish and I are struggling to see a bit. Number 37, Sophia Webb. Sophia Webb, yeah, she was she really was good. good. Very, yep. I mean, Solid it really could have been so many players uh, yep. from the Auckland side. Great contributions. Especially with a team, especially with a game so close. I mean, so many people have contributed so much. Oh, it's a goalie, Ruby Taylor. She did have some great saves and in really clutch moments yeah. today, which yep. I think were pretty brilliant. Yeah, WA girls just getting around her. Really saw a huge improvement in her play throughout the week as well. So well done. Yep. So that wraps up our coverage today. Please join us online on the Australian Lac Lacrosse Network tomorrow. We'll be bringing you the three versus four men's game, which I believe is SA versus New Zealand. And then the one versus two game for the girls, which is SA versus Victoria. And then the men's, or sorry, the under 18s boys game, which is WA versus Victoria. It's going to be a great day of lacrosse down here at Wembley Lacrosse Club. Thanks so much for joining me, Trish. It's been a pleasure to have you on the broadcast. Loved it. Thanks so much. And um, great to have some good expertise um, comments and some calm when I'm in a moment of excitement. <laughs> you did very well containing yourself. In a game yourself. like this. Congratulations. Thanks, well done. Trish. And um, we'll see you tomorrow on the Australian Lacrosse Network.